inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher, unlock the fire in you, cause real women don't bitch, no, real women don't, 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 bitch. Hey, 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 thank you for joining me on the Real Women Don't Bitch podcast. This is your proud host, August Crenshaw, a.k.a. Mrs. Raw, Real and Relentless. I am the number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs because building mental muscle is necessary in order to implement successful business strategies. This show has been created for the woman who is not excuse driven and needs help building a profitable business. I will be interviewing women from various fields who are willing to break the silence on struggles that specifically affect female entrepreneurs. Welcome to a show where I and guest speakers from time to time share our methods that help us beast our business no matter what is going on in our lives. Whether you are an online or brick and mortar business owner, this show is for you. We will hit every angle, personal, professional, and spiritual. Why? Because on any given day, you get hit with shit from a scenario involving one, more, or perhaps all of the above. It all impacts you and your mindset towards your business. I have made it my personal mission to provide a space where we dive deep into the BS we face on a day-to-day basis. Bam! There we go. What's good? What's good? Okay, this is going to be a dual effort. What's going on Facebook? What's going on podcast? I'm coming in here. I'm about to have some fun up in this joint. And if you are down with me, you're about to have some fun too. I have none other than the Jeff Johnson in the building with me. And y'all need to know that that is a big freaking deal. It's not very often that I just run into random people online and especially men, no, nothing against you, brother, at all that I connect to because they usually, you know, five minutes later, come on, y'all ladies, you know how it is. You say, hey, and they say, hi. And then pictures, and then you end up deleting them and blocking them. And it's like every time you think that you, you know, you met a decent person, it ain't no telling what in the world you get. But no, brother, you you came out strong, you came out hard immediately. Your energy was very contagious. Hey, Terry, I see you here and a couple other people. And and it was just so profound. And in a conversation this, that we were having. They were always via the chat. He would, I mean, his brother's in there typing fast, as fast as I'm saying something, putting something in there. And I'm like, I need a live conversation with you. Uh, and then not only that, for those of you all that don't know, okay, everybody's coming in. We got Terry, we got Damari, we got Marcia, we got Dottie. Come on in, ladies. Um, I noticed that, that this book was out. I keep on seeing free write, free write, free write everywhere with these really nice candles, too. I'm like, what in the world? is this and i start digging oh and look y'all for those of y'all that see the video he flexed the candle um and i was kind of exploring what was going on and i was like this is not just any other book and i really believe that women you you ladies you need this book this is something about opening you up personally i'm gonna let him expound set you know in a second but i just want to let you all know why i'm doing this right now As a business coach that works with women that have so many struggles with understanding how to write copy, how to tap into your authenticity and actually put pen to paper and to to connect to your audience, to be able to get your loyal tribe that will purchase from you, I teach people to do this. And I think that there's a very unique methodology inside of what he's written that's going to get you there even in a level in which I cannot. And so we have to realize that everybody learns differently. Everybody needs a different point of access in order to be able to step into uh, their creative genius. And so I want you guys to know about this. So that's all I have to say off the top. And I just want you to say hello to everybody and, and let everybody know who you are in your own words, sir. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, 
I've, I've been on your lives multiple times. One I was on, I think we were on there till like 2.30 in the morning. It was rocking, everybody was high energy. I grabbed a lot of jewels off of there. Phenomenal, phenomenal individual and speaker, teacher, mentor, all of those great things. Um, my name is Jeff Johnson. I am the, the author of Free Write. I'm also a host and entertainer. Uh, I started a brand called Spirits and Lyrics. My company name is Silent Treatment Entertainment. Uh, what Spirits and Lyrics is, it's a platform for all artists all over to come and just enjoy and breathe inside of what the stage area we call the comfort zone. So mm -hmm. what we do is we allow artists to get up there and just do whatever they feel. You know, it's not Showtime at the Apollo, so they're not there to entertain. They're there to breathe. They're there to mm -hmm display their art and do whatever they feel need necessary to get their spirit free, you know? Um, but other than that, man, I, um, I've been being pushed by the universe and I'm, and I do mean pushed. you know, how the universe get, yeah. get bully every now and again. So for the last five years, I've been being pushed into this, um, this speaking, you know what I mean? Um, a lot of people, um, suggested life coaching for me you know I even had a life coach once and my life coach said you should be a life coach mm -hmm. you know <laughs> and, but I, so so I don't know why I don't know why they told me that because after that the sessions had to stop immediately you know what I mean yeah. because it was time to to graduate you know sure so, but right now I'm, I'm in the process of pushing this book free right and to be honest with you um, from the beginning when this book was being put together um, it was a spiritual process. I, I don't want to come on here and act like, oh, yeah, I put a book out. It was not like that. I am super proud of this book. I've read this book 150 times. And this is a fact. I have read this book 150 times. I know every page of this book. And it's because this was a very intimate process for me. It was a very vulnerable process for me. I'm a very uh, private individual. So when the book finally came out and I had it in my hands, I literally sat with the publisher and was like, man, you know, do you think I should put it out? And the publisher was like, no, you are putting it out. You know what I mean? So yes. it's here. So I just want people to know that part about the book. It's not just a book that was written just because. It's a book that was written and designed for specific reasons, you know what I mean? To, to allow people to tap into themselves and release themselves of that slave mentality of not being able to free write, to write freely, to get thoughts, put pen to paper, typing, uh, using your phone, whatever, just getting your thoughts out of your mind and spirit out into the universe. So that's, that's basically what it is. Sure. Man, you, it, it, there's so much wrapped up in everything that you said, and I'm listening to you, and I was just sitting here thinking about my clients, like, because you guys, ladies, you all that are listening, you know, you're entrepreneurs, and when you start talking to them about not getting into the technicalities of selling and just, like, really attracting the souls that are meant for them, that concept of free writing is like, oh, no, that's when, like, your hardcore censorship comes in and it's the killer. Honestly, it's the killer of business. Cause I'm, I'm gonna be real with you, you know, whether it's writing or speaking, I've always made the biggest impact when it was just a thousand percent impromptu. It's like, I'm going live cause I just feel like I'm supposed to go live or you know when I'm feeling some kind of way and I just get to type it and you know right. what you foolish you just, and you this, 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 and, you and by the time I'm through, that's the post that gets the most engagement and right. not, not fluffy engagement. I'm not talking about you guys, you know, falling out with over likes and loves. I mean like back in conversation, not initiated by me, by somebody coming and saying, look, you was talking to me. I can't take this anymore. And right. just really, truly understanding this romance and the beauty of when we allow ourselves to be free and to express ourselves, understanding that it's spiritual and it's allowing us to connect to other people. I believe that so many people are, are missing that. And, and I'm about to, I'm going to let you have the mic back because I want you to really explain this test, but I want you to know what I thought of y'all because we had a little pre-conversation before we started. And the one thing that I thought about was how people always say, well, you know, I like to read the Bible because the Bible says it's the, you know, it's the inspired word of God. And, and so the question I always want to ask people that don't want to write, so did God stop inspiring people with the KGV? Mm -hmm. the, if writing then was the inspired word of God, is he not still inspiring men? 
Does he still not want his messages translated? Does he still not want someone with a unique divine order to, does he not want them to provide hope? And so when you fall in love with the expression of who you are and you're writing, do you not realize that you're putting something that could be there for translation that will be timeless and timely for the years to come? So that's that's my two cents on why you need to listen to this brother, because I believe that the divine wants to speak something through you and you need to allow yourself to believe that it is the inspired word. And guess what? Sometimes David was like, I love you, Lord, and I'm going to dance until my clothes fall off. And sometimes he was like, get my enemies, God, because they straight tripping with me. You know, mm-hmm. no censorship. No mm-hmm. censorship. So, it's, brother, so come on, come on. You, you can thought of something. Bring it. Come on. That, that's a great that's a great point because I think people, people forget sometimes that, you know, there's a human aspect to this thing, right? I, I believe we're all spirits doing human time, right? But in the, in the sense is we still bump into other people. So as much as we try to vibrate to a higher level, as much as we try to like leave our home confident and feeling free and understanding full of love, you might get in your car and spill your coffee and that will be it for the day. You understand me? <laughs> you know, you'd be, you'd be upset. So what it is, is what I've learned is you have to build that tribe around you somebody who you can tap into when your day just took a left to get you back right. You know what I mean? And if, if you don't have those individuals in your life, then you got to become that individual for yourself. Very difficult process when we're always beating our own selves down. You know what I mean? So what I like to say is just breathe. You know, take these opportunities in whatever moments you have and just breathe. Sometimes we forget to breathe. We don't even remember that the thought process of breathing is what's keeping you alive. So we have to, you know, every now and again, just cherish those breaths. You know what I'm saying? So I agree with everything you just said, but at the same time, what I'm trying to do, excuse me, I don't like to use that word trying, what I'm doing, right? What what the universe and what God is doing through me is saying that I don't compare my book to the Bible. I'm not, I wouldn't suggest that, but what, but to your point of, we are philosophers. You know, if you write and put your work out in the world, your work will be here 20 years from now. Yes. I can't even imagine what's going to happen to a young man or a young woman when they pick up free write in 2055. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I, I, my mind just wonders sometimes, like, what will happen? Because I know what happened for me when I picked up certain books. And I'm going, man, this book was written like 40 years ago. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So, I just want to encourage people, if you have a book in your spirit and you just don't know how to do it, the very first step is right. That's the first step to your book. The beauty of technology, though, these days is they have uh, programs where you can record your writings and they'll transcribe them for you. So all you got to do is pick this device up talk into it, speak your thoughts, let your spirit flow, send that thing in. They'll charge you a dollar per minute. When it comes back, you got a handful of gold. You understand what I'm saying? You got a handful of diamonds, a handful of pearls. It's your own personal treasure. The next step after that is what I like to call get out of your own way. And I'm not saying these steps like, hey, this is what I'm saying. This is what I had to fight through in order to release my book. And I know you said you've released multiple books. So how was that process for you? You know what? For me, the books all were the free flow of divine inspiration. Nice. But there, you know, there wasn't any resistance. But let me make sure, because I'm just like you, I like to be transparent. There's always been a writer inside of me, but the writer didn't always come out. So I want to say back in like early 2000, I had started working on a book that was called Touching the Surface. And that book was going to be something that was going to be about me writing out my frustrations because I felt like people had always only touched the surface of who I was. And I was literally going to tell the story of my life and my name in the book was Storm because I felt like that's what I was in in everybody's life. And I never did anything with the book. And then I want to say that around 2015, when this urge came to me, like you, the universe pushed me to business coaching, like the universe is pushing you wherever it's pushing you now. And I was going to try to do that again, but then something in me hesitated and it stopped. 
And so it for so I've had my moments of feeling like I was a writer. I mean, whenever I went to college, if I took, you know, English comp one, two, or if I had to do research papers in my business classes or whatever, or history, I would write. But as far as my free expression of writing, what I thought I didn't do that. But where I was at in this part of the journey, where I started writing all of the books that I've written, it was me being in a completely different place where I tell people all the time, I am in love with the sound of my own voice. So when, so when Pika and I were on a podcast episode the other day, and I was like, you know, you can't plant your seeds on cement. And you get mad, you don't get shit. I was like, wait a minute, hold up, let's go. Let right. me write that down. And, it, and it's not about arrogance. It's about saying, wait a minute, God has created me to be a divine genius. What that, that was genius for me, and it was genius for somebody else. And so... A lot of what I did, like you said, with the transcription, my close, the, the only sales conversation that closes, honestly, I was like, wait a minute. I just sat down and broke this thing all the way down in a webinar. All I need to do is go back and basically transcribe it and then add the components in it that make it more functional for it to actually be a learning tool. And so, which you're going to get into when your book, my book is very similar. All my books are similar to yours because I've never written a book where there hasn't been space to write on the pages. Because Absolutely. I want to provoke thought and I want people to fall in love with the romance of actually not just reading my words, but putting their words down on the paper, their reflections, their revelations. Indeed. Listen, look, first and foremost, look, you know what? Are we taking offering? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got a couple of dollars on me, you dig? I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know, just, let me put something somewhere, please. You <laughs> nah, but that's that's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? Like, I agree with all of that. And, and that's that's I first of all, I love the fact that you said you're in love with your words, right? The sound of your own voice. Because if you've ever said something and it resonated in your own spirit, it necessarily didn't come from you because you heard it for the first time yourself. You're like, you said something, you're like, oh, that was dope. That was like, where's my pen? You know what I mean? Because exactly, you may have not even known about that, but your thought transcended. Mm -hmm. So something even came to you. And in those moments, if somebody calls it arrogance and you shut down, Somebody say, oh, I was arrogant and you shut down. Well, no, 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 no. I don't believe in that. I believe in confidence. So yeah. if God gave it to me, who are you to take it from me? Yeah. So, hey, listen here. I'm going to take my nugget and I'm going to embrace it. And I'm going to say, hey, man, I'm going to quote me because I said this. <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing. So yeah. I agree with you 1,000%. And I think more people need to fall in love with themselves. Like yeah. allow yourself to be your greatest teacher. If you don't, then, then what are we going to do out here? If, if you're trying to learn this life through everyone else's eyes and everyone else's perspective, then what have you truly learned? Everyone else's ideology. You didn't learn anything about you. Mm -hmm. So we have to become our own teacher. So when you say something and it resonates in your spirit, you got to know God just taught you something. You got to grab hold of that nugget and write it down and transcribe it and do whatever you can to maintain it. So I agree with that wholeheartedly. You know what I was on, I was interviewed for a, a book fair, a virtual book fair about a year ago. And the woman was just asking me questions and I was going, going, going. And then she asked me something about, well, how can you always give so much? And I was just talking and I was like, well, you know, if, if, you, if you cut your skin, it heals. And if this happens, it heals. And, you know, I ain't got no problem giving because we naturally regenerative. You know, as fast as I give love, I get love. And I was like, whoa. And my friend even typed it out. Matter of fact, Imani's on here. And, and I was like, wait, I was like, girl, you just don't be understanding. I'd be woe myself because I was like, I never said nothing like that before. I talked about, you know, reaping what you sow and all of that. I was like, I got to write that down. And so that's something that stuck with my spirit. And I need that, right? Because being in a business where you collaborate with people, sometimes you get cut, you get abused. You know, some people love you and treat you well. And, you know, the first time I did a set of collaborations in a summit, I stopped. Because I was like, dang, man, I just felt like I got beat down. I had my Rocky moment. I had to go back and get my rematch. But right. now that I'm back, 
But I've had an entire year for that statement to resonate in my spirit. It's like, you know what? If anybody takes this opportunity to work with me and takes advantage of me, it doesn't make a difference because I'm naturally regenerative. I got to keep on giving because I got a community of people out there I have to serve. But all of that just to say that that was a random statement. And like you said, it was a divine download. I was just in flow. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know. I didn't have a, pre a prepared script. And those words have continued to speak life into me up until this point. And, and yes, we have got to get there where we're like, wait a minute, my lot, my words, they breathe life. Absolutely. They breathe life into me. Absolutely. And, and, and that's a, that's a, that right there is honestly the key because everything that comes into you comes through you. Right. So if you're reading, you're reading. If you're speaking, you're speaking. So if you if you tell yourself, oh, I don't feel good and oh, I don't like these clothes. And guess what? Your energy going to reflect that. Ain't nobody going to say, hey, that's a nice outfit. You don't even like the outfit. You understand what I'm saying? Look, at the end of the day, I'm beautiful. You dig? That's the spirit you have to have. So when you're speaking and you're flowing and those words are coming, what God is doing is saying, okay, let me give her these jewels because she's going to go through something where she's going to need them. But you're just smart enough to hold on to them. So when you go through it, you reflect back on what God gave you. And that's what we have to do. We got to reflect back on what God has given us, what the universe is supplying for us. If you never reflect back, you're going to keep running into the same circumstances. Yeah. The beauty of growth is learned experience. Learn it, understand it, Feel how you feel after you've experienced it and then grow from it. So when you're speaking and being taken advantage of, this is what I tell people. If you're afraid of being taken advantage of, you'll never get off the porch. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is you don't know what someone's intentions are. Nope. You can only know what your intentions are. You have to cover yourself, protect your spirit, give, 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 give. But when you get hit, when you get hurt, when you get taken advantage of, and I mean, sometimes, even in business, when you get taken advantage of, sometimes you got to go sit down and think about what grandma taught you. Because you'd be like, well, I know we ain't business together, but I feel like dressing up in black. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on now. <laughs> you know, somebody done this, you'll be like, whoa. Woo! I think you got this corporate thing mixed up. Because yeah. people, when you get out here in this world, People do things to you and you'd be like, oh, wow, I didn't believe somebody would actually do that. But once you go through it, once you develop that tough skin, that thick layer, that next level of understanding, and you know that as long as you're moving in divinity and you set yourself up for purpose, yeah. meaning even if I'm working with this person and they decide that they're going to take advantage of me, I have to make sure I get something out of this. Yes. Yeah, man. So you were speaking a couple nights ago on live and you were talking about, hey, you know, don't be afraid to charge for your time and services. And if they can't do it, say, OK, well, call me when you can and uh, we'll get back to that. And I thought that was so profound because in my practice, that's always been my biggest hurdle. Gotcha. Giving my time willingly. Like I can be on the phone for like three hours. Do you know what you can get done in three hours? You know what type of money you missing in three hours? But I'm dedicating my time. And then I noticed I was talking to people for three hours, four hours, five hours, and they would still be going through the same thing the next day. Mm, no skin in the like, game. Yeah. I'm like, no, we can't do that. So to your point, just speaking, taking your own nuggets, locking them in, putting them in your jewelry box or your treasure chest, whatever you need to do. And just understanding that even when you make points, you have to eat off the food you serve as well. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You, 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 and if you don't, which we were just talking about this, if you, if you don't, if you can't receive that which you speak, you like hearing the sound of your own voice. Right. That, that is arrogance. That is, that's the definition of arrogance. Yes. Now if, that, that's, that's, a, that's, a completely, that's a completely different thing. Let me, let me come back because we got a lot of comments in here. Let me just kind of scroll through. Uh, Damar said, hey, fam. Yay, Terry caught us live. Hola. And let's see, dope book. Uh, finished it in two days because she couldn't put it down. Imani's wow. also saying, hey, uh, da, 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 da. you better say that, brother. Yes, the word is powerful. 
Uh, right, no more is a powerful thing. Words have so much power. Yes, let your spirit flow just spit and fire, right? Fire, we all have our own unique fire to spit, super hot fire. What, what, this is fire. No. Right. Um, a book is a conversation or should be, in my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. I keep my canva open now to create my own means for times like that. Yes, random, but you're reminding me of home right now. You from New York, Jeff? Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, from Anitra. And then, uh, of course, Damari already popped up in there. Upstate, baby. Hashtag <laughs> ROC. So, uh, where are you at in your own life, man? Right on, Camille. Yes, folders over nuggets and just jumped on. No, you got to catch it from the beginning. Beauty of growth is learned, experience, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, we over here, we spitting fire. I, I know it is. We both together. It's a lot of juice that's coming out of here. Hey, uh, Ty, I see you just hopped on. So talk to them about y the book. Let you know you, what, what, what birthed it. You've, you've released it. And what can they expect if they, if they chime into it? What birthed it and what can they expect if they chime into it? So uh, what birthed it is, um, I would to just being transparent. What what birthed the book would would be the passing of my grandmother. My grandmother passed in 2017. So um, that was one of those situations in my life where I kind of like, you you know how you miss a year or two. <laughs> so when that situation happened, I remember just leaving. And I'd stayed gone. I think I just got back like January of this year. But um, it was something that needed because after that, I kind of allowed myself to just float. It, I'm a swimmer, right? I'll swim upstream, downstream. Like I'll, you throw me over a waterfall, I'm coming back up, playboy. This is just, <laughs> that's how the game go. I'm coming to get it. If it's back up there, I'm coming back up. So when that happened, I found myself just drifting. Mm -hmm. And I was arguing with myself, like, come on, man, like, yo, we got to go, we got to swim. And I, I began to not care about as much, you know, things just didn't feel as real anymore. You understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So in that process, uh, a lot of other things began to happen, like dominoes, man. And I couldn't, I was, wa I was watching them fall. And I kind of, it was kind of like the most ugly, beautiful situation ever. I just was watching things fall. And I remember sitting there going, normally I would jump in here and start setting these things back up, but I never knew what happens when they all fall. I never saw the process because I've never allowed it to happen. So, I mean, these things were just tapping, right? And so when that last one was about to fall, my daughter was under it. Mm. And I'm like, all right, okay. So it was that, it was that, that feel of losing my grandmother, but then seeing my daughter at be the result of that last domino and I had to get, get back in shape. And so what I did was I said, all right, well, I'm going to release a book and I got to credit, you know, my team, my team said, well, pick a date and they just picked the date. So they picked the date. They said, you're going to have a book release. So now I'm like, okay, hold on. You know, now people around me are pushing me. Yeah. They're, pushing me. They're saying, okay, let's go. You want a book? You want to push a book out, push a book out. So I'm getting my content together. And when I say getting my content together, I mean, like, I'm opening my phone and a, and a free write is just sitting in my phone. And I'm like, man, I wrote that in 2010. And I'm like, wow, OK, let me see what that is about. And so I then I began to tap in. I began to pray. I began to kind of fast. I began to tap into my spirit and say, all right, Lord, you know, this is the journey we're going to go on. I'm going to need your help because I really I'm a private person and I don't want to just put something in the universe that can be torn apart. I want to be able to be proud of it. And after that point, things just start manifesting. So the process of my personal book was through pain, right? Mm -hmm. But in that pain and out of that pain, I was able to grow this amazing flower. And here's the deal about this flower. Wow. I watered this thing. I nurtured it. I pruned it. I um, Everything that happened around this book is divine. And, and, and I'm going to go ahead and say there are illustrations in this book, right? The illustrator who put the illustrations in this book, I've never met him. We had one conversation. That gentleman was able to capture every illustration to each piece 
perfectly and we have never met, but we actually have a love for each other from this stage forward. All the artwork in the book is his artwork, right? So here's a gentleman I've never met, mm -hmm. phone conversation, spark from there. His mind went to going, my mind went to going, that came together. I got uh, great publishing on it. And after that, the process just began to roll. Now here's the truth. Before the book came out, I was sitting and I had all these papers, right? I had printed out all the papers. I had the illustration. Everything was just everywhere. I don't, you know, it, it was literally everywhere. And I sat still in the middle of it, right? And I took a composition notebook and I said, all right, Lord, can you please put this book together? And I sat there for three hours. And when I reopened that composition notebook, this book was looking right back at me. And I know it probably sounds a little far-fetched, but these are facts. I don't want anybody to believe that I'm just like, hey, I wrote a book. Nah, man, I really feel like every day I see this book, I'd be like, boy, listen here. You know, I, you know, I did that thing, you know what I mean? I'd be like, yo, you know, you know, I, I walk out the house now, the sun be on me, I'd be like, you know, an author coming through, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> feel, feel good about it. And uh, what the beauty of it is, the, the, the beauty of the book, is that people have been inboxing me mm. and saying, and I'm talking about like three in the morning, hey, I'm reading your book and I just wanna say, this piece such and such just took me back here. And I'm like, okay. Cause I, I really didn't even think that that part of it would happen. I just thought people would pick it up and begin to write because it's a journal mixed in the actual book. Mm -hmm. So when people start saying the actual pieces were making them think and write. And I began to sit back and say, all right, Lord, I see what's going on here. So that was the process of how the book came about. But now that the book is here, it has opened up a door in me. I'm working on my third book right now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm over here, like just filled with just life and just energy of just saying, okay, let's get this thing out here. So if anybody is listening to this and anybody watching, this is all I really want you to understand. You don't have to do anything pretty, it's your process. Nobody can tell you how to go through your process. I don't care if you write your book on a newspaper on the back of the city bus going home every day. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Your process is your process. Thing you have to do though, is complete your process. People always wanna tell you what to do and how to do, but they don't ever encourage you to complete it. Yeah. I just want to encourage you on today to complete your process. Yes. Don't just talk about it. Don't just imagine it. Complete it because I promise you, when you complete it, you see this smile? <laughs> this, this is a smile of completion right here. You yes. Yes. This is, like I know I'm red, you know, my cheeks red, but that's all good because I'm, I'm feeling comfortable in my spirit right now. <laughs> so, so I, I'm just serious in, in the reason why the book comes with a candle and with the pen is because I said, okay, let's set the mood for writing, right? Let's set the mood. See, you, you can get the book. That's great. You can read it. But if you get the book, the pen and the candle, you're going to write. Your body going to say, we should be doing something. Something needs to happen right now. So these things that came together, it was important to me to push that out as a package. So when I see people with the book, the candle, they got the pen, and then they're going, it's like no excuses. It's like, oh, I, I, oh, I got a pen in my hand. So just write. Mm -hmm. Don't read it. Don't read what you're writing. Just write. Because if you read... Uh, like say if I wanted to write something and I started with someone's name that I was upset with. Oh, I don't want to write about that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You want to talk about Frank and Sharon and, and Tom and them. So you got to keep writing. But if you read it, then you begin to get bogged down with the situation. No, this is how we release the situation. Yes. Hey, you know what? I almost jumped on Nancy today, but I'm going to write what would have happened if she would have said one more word. Do you know how many people got Nancy's in the offices and want to read your story about what would have happened to Nancy? You understand what I'm saying? So that's just how I feel about it. Man, it, it, I always love that, you know, when I have conversations with people, 
even if they're slightly different, there's always these moments in life that are very uh, familiar. And so, num so number one, to all of the things that you've written in the book and the way they bring up other things for other people, but this is, this is why we have to tell our story. Because when we are just open and vulnerable about what we've been through, where we're going and so on and so forth, then we allow people to realize that they're not alone. They're not the only person because the spirit of isolation is the death of an entrepreneur. You, and I know nobody else is going through this, but me, it's like, that's the biggest fallacy ever. And so something that you said, you experienced the birth because of the loss of your grandmother. And I experienced the rebirth of something in me because of the loss of my grandmother. And for me, that was actually at the top of this year. Because going towards the end of last year, I was like, what's kind of going on with me, you know, in my business? And, you know, I'm always showing up. I'm never not there. But there was like this damper on certain facets of my business. And, and to make a long story short, I went back to St. Louis, spent some time with her. She was dealing with Alzheimer's. And, you know, in that moment when I was there, she remembered who I was. She just didn't remember certain factual things. She spoke what she needed to speak over my life. And, and it was amazing. I don't think what you said about the other part is far-fetched at all because the spirit is so divine and the way that he communicates with us is, is crazy. It would take the women that are in my, um, that were in the summit to attest to this. But I went in there and I was like, you guys, I just am emotional today and I need to talk to you all because, you know, somebody, you know, said, because I emailed my list. When I found out that my grandma, when I called her and she didn't know who I was, I got in free write mode. I was like, I'm pissed off. And I'm, if my auntie would have been sitting next to me, I would have punched her in the face because she didn't tell me. And I've been asking her what's going on with my grandmother. Yeah. And so, and I put it, I sent it to my email list. I put it out there on Facebook and all of these people started responding. And there was this one person. See, this is the beauty of putting your free write out there. One of the people responded to me on my email list and was telling me about some things that they know from Hunter Hawaii and what it meant about me holding her spirit and anchoring her here when she really wanted to be free. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, when I started the summit, I went into the group and I'm like, y'all, I finally realized that I'm basically, I'm still anchoring my granny and I need to let her go and I need to let her be free. I promise you the next day I got a text message from my aunt that said, your granny said that she knows God and she's ready to go. Straight like and that. And, and, and still to this day, and it, and it shook everything in me, but in, at, at that season in my life, it shook me in such a manner that was like, girl, whatever you doing right now, you better turn it up a thousand degrees because you know what she said to you when you were back in St. Louis and you need to fulfill that purpose. And so, you know, it basically, unfortunately, sometimes in death, that's when the passing of the mantle is done, you know, but that's a unique thing between the two of us, that there's something about the rebirth of us in the passing and having our ancestors have our back. And something as simple as that. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm never, I'm never going to forget you, period. I didn't, I don't think there, I think you would have been a person I would have remembered regardless, but that high level of connectivity and, and it happens every time I interview somebody for a podcast. It's like, wait a minute, you grew up like this. You went here, you experienced this abuse or whatever. We have so many more things that connect us to one another. Absolutely. But, but if you but if you put on the facade and if you try to walk around in this world like you got it all together, especially since you're an entrepreneur, you, know, you really need to have it together, then right. you're missing life moments. Indeed. Life moments of connection. And in and, and, and order to be an entrepreneur, you have to be able to connect. You know, it's it's really difficult trying to be a fake entrepreneur. People will see through that immediately. Yeah. And think about it, it, just being fake in general. You know what I mean? Now, um, be private, you know, be private until you know you can trust people with the proper information. Right. But at the same time, you don't have to put on a facade. Like, what are you trying to prove? You can't get, look, I, I tell people like this when I talk to people about whatever they're going through, I tell them, the devil is in the details. And if you are always the angel, how can we get to the details? Sometimes you got to ask a person, what did you do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, where, where were you in the situation? Yeah. Not what you want me to believe. Mm -hmm. What did you do? Like, for real, for real. Did you face 
curl up? Did you scowl? Did you smack your teeth? You know, one time, you know, my mother came in the house and I was sitting there with an ice pack on my mouth. And she was like, what's going on? I said, you know, my grandma, <laughs> your mama hit me in the mouth. And she said, well, what did you do? And right then it was a clear understanding that, well, she ain't just walking around hitting people. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? But I had smacked my teeth that day. And anybody know, you do not smack your teeth. Lord, why would you be smacking your teeth? Oh, my God. Did your, did your grandmother tell you she would uh, slap the devil out of you? Not those exact words, but... Uh, not only did she tell me, but I watched him walk out of me. It was, it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting process. Woo! I'm telling you, she literally slapped Lucifer out my body. And he left. And he left on command. So, you know, when, when you talk about that connection with your grandmother and how, you know, it, it, it uplifts and pushes, same scenario, not to go too far into it, but I was there um, when she passed. But the day prior to her passing, she showed me something that I had never saw. She was 90 years old when she passed, but she showed me something that day that I had never saw her display, right? And it was a level of pain. I had, that was my first time ever in, ni in my life seeing my grandmother display any level of pain, right? So when that happened, I left the nursing home and I went and had a very candid conversation with God. And my conversation went just like this. It's not fair for a woman who has served you my entire life, her children's entire life, who has represented, mm. who has held your flag, held that Bible, has done nothing but been a true servant to you to experience that level of pain, in my opinion. Now, I'm not challenging and I'm not questioning, but I'm asking, give her a level of peace, meaning heal her completely or take her home with you mm. because she's not who she is used to being, right? And that's what we don't necessarily want. So at, when she transitioned, I want to just say this because it's very important. She literally turned to gold. Mm. Fact. And, it, and I know it, it's she turned to gold. I'm talking about just beautiful gold. Her skin was absolute gold like everybody was like yo what's happening the sky parted it rained the hardest it's ever rained that i've ever seen for like a strong 60 seconds evaporated two rainbows appeared in the sky opened up i said you know what when i tell you she got ushered in mm. baby that's called putting in work so when I saw that, I said, oh, whoa, she wasn't beating me and put me on the front row for no reason. You know, <laughs> you know it's, a, it's an end game to this thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the end game to this thing. So, you know, I, I, I take that and I cherish it. And so like the same way you think about the good times, that's what we have. But what I tell people is if there's a moment where you're in your space of, of sadness or grievance, nobody can tell you how long you can grieve or the process. But we have to encourage you through it. Yeah. We just can't let you sit in there. We got to say, all right, yeah. take your moment, take your time. But hey, girl, you know, normally, girl, you be having on them nice heels and them pants. You girl, get back to yourself. Or hey, my guy, you know, where your waves at? You ain't got your waves no more. You know what I mean? I got <laughs> cooker books. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's just my spirit and how I like to encourage. I believe encouraging people is the best way to go. Yeah. It's, it's, we, people get put down every day. I mean, people work on these jobs, and this is one thing that made me become an entrepreneur. Um, when, when you are at a job and you realize you're smarter than everybody above you, right? Like the manager, the supervisor, you meet the CEO, and you be like, how in the world did they make this company happen when they don't know anything about it? I started to sit back in every job I've ever worked at always wanted to make me a manager, right? Oh, Jeff, oh, you should be, I mean, I'll be there for two weeks. Hey, you, you thought about applying for the manager position? I'm like, for what? You know, what, like, what is so great about me that yeah. you want me to run your company? And I had to sit back on that thing. So I said, yo, listen, you know, I've been a hustler my entire life. 
But, you know, you got to do the thing, you know, every now you got to do the right thing. You got to go get a job and get a 401k and all of these things. So I tried that route, but I never was happy on any job I've ever been on. There was always, you know, those commercials where the dog is like looking out the window and he's just seeing, I used to, <laughs> I used to be, <laughs> I used to be like, man, like, I don't want to be here. You know, there's so much more that I would love to be doing that I would love to give my time. I want to work with the youth. I want to work with the elderly. You know, I don't want to talk to Frank all day. Frank drink coffee. Frank doesn't have the best breath. I don't want to be in the same cubicle with Frank. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. So what I'm saying is for the entrepreneurs out there in, in my drive to being an entrepreneur is just keep pushing. Yeah, and I mean, you're gonna hit walls. I've hit financial walls. I'm talking about financial walls where they so tall. I'll be like, all right, well, uh, maybe we should turn around and build another route because I don't know if we're gonna be able to knock that financial wall down. So, <laughs> so yeah, there. So it, it, you know that just being discouraged as an entrepreneur, it's gonna happen. Yeah, but you have to build your plan, stay focused, stay steadfast. But we have to talk completion. Yeah. There, so much excitement and and, and, and and just thrill in completing something. Yeah. When you get to writing, write, write, write. But when you think about getting ready to complete, don't stop your process. No. Don't be scared. Don't be nervous. Find a publisher. I can find you a publisher. I'm sure you know publishers. Whatever we need to do to get you to the next level of getting this smile, right here this is Jesus. getting this smile <laughs> on your face because this is the most genuine smile that I've ever had because this is mine yeah like nobody could take this from me like my kids you know my wife helped you know what I'm saying so you know she get partial credit they beautiful it's all hers you know mm -hmm. whatever they do great it's all hers she gets all the credit they get one bad grade my family dumb you know what I mean we got to stop that <laughs> but <laughs> but no <laughs> I'm just saying, we, we <sighs> encourage people to complete the process. Yes. It's just showing you something that was completed, and it was yeah. a divine process. And I, I guarantee you, if you get the book and read it and write in the book, it will spark something in you. I'm guaranteeing that. This book was, was written with nothing but love, and, and there's a piece in here that, that is entitled um, Her Broken Crown, right? Mm. This is the piece that I've been receiving so much feedback on. Like I'm talking, you know, inboxes, inboxes. And so I went back and read it again. It's very powerful. It's a very powerful piece and it's an honest piece and it's a true piece about, you know, a friend of mine. So, you know, when you get the book, check out Her Broken Crown and let me know what you think about it. It's, it's a very uh, powerful piece. Mm, well, make sure that when we get off of here that you go inside of the group, that you put the link in there. I'm going to ask you for all of your links because I'm going to put this bad boy. You've been spitting so much gold that I, I want to put all the links on the podcast episode, all of that stuff so that people can know about the book. They can order it. And, and ladies, having the ability to be free and to express yourself, whatever you can do to aid in that process, you know what I'm saying? Do it because yeah. that because that's key. Um, I'm grateful. I mean, I'm, I'm like on fire. I love having conversations with people that once I'm done, I'm like, I got to go do something right? <laughs> because, yeah, because, you know, that, and those are the kind of people, you know, that you want in your life. Um, and, and, and I'll still say just this one last thing before we get ready to get out of here. Hey, Arnett, you, you're catching us at the end and you definitely go back to the beginning. Beautiful. Um, there's always help. Indeed. You know, you're talking about, you know, those rough patches and when it looks ugly. And this is, once again, this is why we must create content, write books, do videos. Because in some of my darkest hours, you know, I, I couldn't afford a coach or, or pay for anything. And you know what? Unless Brown was my distance coach. You know what I'm saying? Eric right. Thomas, I was like, you won't be a liar. You won't be a gazelle. I'm not going to be no <laughs> 
<laughs> right. You, you be doing push-ups and everything. And I'm like, I'm going. I'm going to be right. fine. Let me get out here and head over to this track and let me ride right. my bike, have a bicycle on Tiffany, and then do an hour-long right. video on Facebook right. telling everybody else. And, and everything I'm saying to people about making it was really me saying it to myself that I can make it. Right. You know, and even for you guys that are here, you know, you're listening to this brother. You can literally just follow his page and read what he, I mean, he's, he put so many posts up. You, you're going to get inspired. You, you, you're going to get inspired. Those of you that are in this group, I know that it's hard to fathom. I know it is, but quit thinking about whether or not this is a damn funnel. I'm a business owner. Yes, it's a funnel for those that are ready to be funnelized. Right. But for those of y'all that are not, it is a uh, it is a treasure chest Indeed it of is. jewels just because of the topics that are brought up for you all to think about on a day to day basis to sharpen your mind. God is always going to leave something there. You know, I know that I personally do what I do because I had those people that would sit on the phone and talk to me because I'm willing to put skin in the game, but I ain't got no more skin to put in. You know, I'm all skeletons. You know, what am I going to do from now? I, I had some heavy regeneration to go through, but, right. there, but, there's, but there's always help. And, 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 and in addition to there being help from people, you know, the reason why I'm being such a strong proponent for his book is because when you do have those moments of absolute solitude, then that's when you have to appreciate the conversations with the divine. You know, I, I, I say it all the time. God manifests in three ways. You know, people talk about the Trinity. We know the Father, Son, Holy, Holy Spirit, for those of you all that are Christians. But that Trinity, the Trinity is manifest in us. There's God in me, there's God in you, and then there's God in the outer experience and how we connect all of those three things together. And so you deciding to take a hold of his book and connect with him to see what the divine connected with him is going to allow the divine to connect with you. And so when you have those still moments, you've got a tool now to help you get in touch with those those deep, dark places, those, those hurt places places, those broken places, and then also the places of joy and when you've had a good time so that you can actually love the romance of this process. Indeed. You know, people, people say trust the process. Well, I say love the process and be the process. In entrepreneurship, you must love the process and be the process. Embody that bad thing. And, and make it do what it do. So uh, we've been on here for approximately an hour. So many people came on. They showed up for you. I, if I didn't know no better, I would be jealous. I don't think I had this many people on my live video, sir. <laughs> well, hey, listen. If you for me, they'd be like, August going to cuss us out because we ain't did nothing. Yeah, look. You uh, you said something the other night. I got up and started writing. I was like, I think she was talking to me. Let me uh, let me do what I'm supposed to do today. You know what I mean? No, I I um, I want to um say this to you though. Like your voice, um, and your energy is absolute powerful, and I love it because you know, either before you speak or after you're done, you be like, and I ain't for everybody, but I'm for somebody. You know what I mean? And you you speak with that roar. But it's confidence and it's intelligence. It's not just blatant, just talk. And so, look, I'm just letting you know from me to you, I appreciate you. I've only known you a short while. And since I've been tapping in and, and, and like coming in on the lives and seeing the encouragement and the tribe you guys are building. I mean, it was six ladies up on the screen the other night and I was sitting there with a piece of paper and a pen like, hold on now, wait. Because that's really, that was my whole life growing up. I used to get sat in the room with my sisters and they used to be like, now do this. And I'd be like, all right, hold on. Let me figure that <laughs> out. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, that, that's always been my tribe. That's my nucleus. I'm, I'm way comfortable in that space because I know how to operate in that space because I was taught what to get out of that space and what not to want from that space. It's a safe space. You know what I mean? You got to put the genders where they are, not look for certain things except that connection, that divine connection. So when I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the screen and I'm seeing six different women from six different walks of life and they spit in flame and fire and game. And I'm like, oh my God, like if we could just get all six of them, we'd be millionaires right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I mean, you had the young lady, she was doing the spiritual thing. You had the young lady at the bottom. She was like, let me tell you, she was talking real smooth and swell. I was like, yo, what is popping over here? I'm loving this. So I, I just want to tell you like, yo, I appreciate your platform. I appreciate how you give, give, give. And I appreciate how you encourage people to want to charge for what they give. That's something that you, you, you preach and you encourage. And I think more people need to teach people 
to do that so they don't feel like they're wasting time or being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, you are your best product. You understand? You When you walk into a space and somebody looks you in your eyes, they're looking at your product. Regardless to when you pull out a book or whatever, you are your product. So you represent that very well. Like you said, your digital, Google me, my digital footprint. I was like, bang, bang. You know, I was hype. I was, <laughs> I was in the crib like two in the morning, busting shots. Like, okay, like, yeah, Google me. You know what I mean? But I had to go in there and, and get my mug shot deleted. But it's cool. You know, don't worry about that. But no, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, uh, that energy, high powered energy that's your style that's your format if, if i see it somewhere else i'm snitching i'm telling no nah, that ain't yours that ain't authentic that's my girl she over here running things no nah, and i'm snitching i'm coming in the group we're gonna be like the beehive on them nope you gotta stop <laughs> you, know, you ain't doing that <laughs> you, know what I'm saying? you ain't gonna be doing that that's not your style so you know i salute you and i appreciate you definitely thank you for the opportunity to, to to come on here man and um be candid and have a conversation about the book and just you know before i get out of here man i just want to just encourage everybody to just breathe right those moments between your argument or your confidence those moments between your ego or whatever you're going through breathe every now and again just remember to breathe i'm not talking about just doing it and then spouting negativity i'm talking about saying oh man lord i sure thank you for that breath that could have been the one but it wasn't mm -hmm. and we gotta focus on that and if you focus on that and focus on you it's not selfish it's self-preservation and it's law it's the eternal law mm -hmm. you can't help anybody else if you don't help you first they even tell you on the plane put your oxygen mask on first then assist others yeah. the beauty of putting it on first you're the first calm, you're the first alert, and you can move accordingly. You can't move if you're running around trying to do something. You're going to die in the process. And I don't mean physically die. Like my grandmama said, a disobedient child don't live half their days, and that don't mean you're going to die. You understand what I'm saying? Until you just my gonna... grandma did say that. Right. <laughs> right. So, you know, just protect your spirit. Remember to breathe. You know, even if you don't buy the book, that's fine. This young lady right here, phenomenal woman incredible speaker mentor life coach business person business mind um tap in there are a lot of beautiful people on here that are starting businesses have already created businesses and i mean this group is really a phenomenal group of individuals and i see how you're selecting and that's super dope because that means you're being part of a vip group so once again thank you for the opportunity and i definitely appreciate it Thank you. Well, thank everybody that spent time with us. We are going to get out of here. We are saying deuces. Bye. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to cultivate a mindset that is biased towards taking action. No bitching, whining, or complaining. Here our mantra is, real women don't bitch, we get shit done. See you next week as I continue to bring you what you need to keep your head in the game and beast your business. Don't forget to hit subscribe and leave us a five-star review. Would you like a specific topic covered? Have a question you would like answered live? Then head on over to realwomendon'tbitchpodcast.com. Subscribe to my email list. Hit me up and I got you. Interested in being a guest speaker? You walk the walk? Then you can sign up on the website too. This is your number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs, Mrs. Raw, Real, and Relentless. Signing out. Deuces! Inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher. Unlock the fire in you.